the queer bunch we are back we took a little hiatus in summer uh we were busy with pride and we were trying to re-envision the show a little bit so we got a new thing happening here every uh, month we're going to have different artists from across canada a different roster of artists who will be joining us and different conversations will uh, so over the year you're going to get to meet a lot of awesome talents from across our country and we're going to have invigorating conversations as we always do on community topics and issues that are uh that make uh, that make our community tick and uh with that let's uh let's uh get everybody to introduce themselves so we get to meet all the new people we have it we have some uh we have some regulars with us morgan how you been I've been pretty good. My album is now out, so that's really exciting for me. Um, and yeah, I'm about to move again because I like Last moving. time we talked on the show, you were moving, weren't you? I, I think that was the last episode. You're moving again? Well, I moved into an apartment and now I'm moving back into a house that I own. So. Okay. All right. How was your pride? Pride was good. Um, yeah. I mean, drama always, but <laughs> for the most part, good. So. Uh, and Kenny will get to you at the end, okay? Because <laughs> you and I are producing the show. Uh, let's get to meet some of the new people. Uh, Danny, introduce Hello. yourself. Yeah. Yeah, hi, I'm Danny. Uh, my stage name is Danny Diamond. Uh, my pronouns, if you want to address me, are he, him. Um, I'm not very strict on pronouns, but if it feels like something you want to do, that's, that's that. Um, yeah, I'm based out of Hamilton right now, and I... Did live in Toronto, but I moved closer to family. Uh, I'm a recording artist that does electronic house, pop, all the way through to different types of genres of house. So beautiful. Have you had any uh, recent releases that we should check out? Um, I just had Karma release uh, right before Pride Month. Um, right now we're working on re-releasing it with a better mix. Okay. Uh, putting marketing behind it. So I kind of released it. Um, but got a better mix done basically since then. And I want to re-release it and put the proper marketing and budget behind it. Yeah. And currently working on remixing that song with a producer, as well as a few other remixes that are uh, going to be coming out from some of my previous releases that we've done. So Very nice. And you know, I love your work. Thank uh, you. Uh, very welcome. Uh, Kalissa, let's meet you. Hey, uh, my name is Kalissa. I go by she and her. I am a Toronto artist, been doing this since 2011. Um, as I've progressed in my artistry, I try to make it a point to make music to raise awareness. Um, and I work with Kay Woods, who's with us today as well. We go, and I'll show you for the people, by the people. Oh, um, I know, I love that. Cool. Yeah. So when we perform together, um, you know, we, we have collaborated on a few songs and we're continuing to collaborate on raising issues on, you know, homelessness, addiction, mental health, just all the way around because they're all intertwined. Um, so, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. I love your message driven work. Uh, and since we mentioned uh, K Woods, then let's head to K Woods now. My name is Cam Kamala. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Kamala. K Woods is my artist name, no pronouns. Um, I actually like I'm not really I got into the music later so I'm I guess you could say I'm emerging um and that's like Calissa said because we wanted to to do like because I'm an advocate and I work in the literary world as an author 
Okay. Um, and I also do directing and I'm getting into film. I'm in film school right now. Um, That's what Kalissa told me. I did not know that about you. Yeah. So, and you're an author. Yeah, four time published. Right. Um, but I I wanted to hear music that was saying a message, some with lived experience with mental health and addiction. So I kind of wanted to create music that was speaking to those issues. And I loved Calissa's voice and that's where we are. <laughs> I think we started in 2020. I started in 2022 okay. and we've been going ever since. Yeah. It's good to see some actually people who are new to the to the music like I like I am. So we're, we're yeah. <laughs> sharing the journey. You had just a fantastic um uh, very powerful video release, music video release. Yes, faded to black, and that's yeah. based on alcohol addiction. That was that was pretty, very good, amazing video. Um, I, I will say, and and I've worked, we've worked on a couple of projects together again, several, yeah. and she did, uh, Kay, Kay did my um, time waits for no one video. Oh, yeah, I directed Jade, it. Jade Electra was the star in that. That was another. She great completely person. directed that, and you know it was just it was awesome. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And Aaron, you're new to the show first time. Hello, everyone. Yeah, okay. so uh, yeah, I, I go by uh, Aaron D'Souza. Uh, it's my real name and also the name that I use um, in my music. I go by he, him, his pronouns. Um, as far as music, uh, I mean, I love all, um, all kinds. I'm I'm like um, musically uh, all um, over the place. If, if I had to narrow it down to one genre, it would be a, a pop music but it's popular music. So I I kind of incorporate a bit of um, a bit, bit of a mishmash of, of many genres, like pop, some rocks, a bit, bit of country. Uh, I mean, I, mean I, I, I studied jazz at, at um, Humber College. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I, I love um, uh, all, all kinds of music. So if you ask me what's on your playlist, it changes all the time. Sometimes it's uh, hits today. Sometimes it's hits from like, back in the day, like 70s, 80s, 90s, or earlier, uh, it changes all all the time. That's what I love about you, actually, is that you appreciate classical and old stuff as well. Like you, uh, for, for uh, I want to say for somebody in, from a younger generation, I know that you love things from the 30s and 40s and 50s, and I love that. Um, yeah, yeah. You've, been, you've probably been the longest in music. How You've been for, for in this for a while, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I, I, I started piano when I was... Um, I was seven. Uh, I mean, I've been singing all my life, but I didn't start like vocal lessons professionally until I, I was 20. And I was told for, me, for men, it's best to wait till after nature calls, let's put it that way. Cause then, like, <laughs> well, well, yeah, because like, you know, in your teens, your voice drops. So you, so you can't get, yeah. So you can't be a, a, a boy soprano anymore, but I love how I sound now uh, as, a, 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 as opposed to like 15, tw uh, uh, tw uh, 20 years ago. Um, so, and, and I, and I keep saying, because uh, Antoine, you mentioned uh, how I I love music from the, uh, back in the day, from like my parents' uh, generation and, and all that. Um, because I I mean I I say to people know the masters, know the ones that paved the way, because it gives you more appreciation for all kinds of music. Because like you know uh, the the ones that paved the way, you know jazz and blues, know that stuff because they gave us uh, rock and roll and disco music and hip hop and soul and R and B the list goes on so it's all it's always good to know about uh who um started it and how it's evolved and changed um over the years um but it, but it's good like i think one benefit on spotify is that um it uh it shows you a wide range of artists that maybe you never even heard of i love it oh cool. thank you kenny 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 and I are going to start collaborating more on producing the show y'all have met kenny over the year in uh, a lot of the different episodes, and Kenny brings us the uh, LGBT creative network. Is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> Something along those lines. Uh, <laughs> the Q LGBTQ creative network. It's had many. It it keeps evolving as as things change and things grow. I'm trying to kind of keep it moving in a real positive direction and. Yeah, uh, I um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. That's me. What uh, have you been doing? Music? You no, you've uh, well, you actually you launched today a new project that you've had before. So when back in COVID, when COVID started, um, I got into this around 2018 because I wasn't seeing any queer artists out there getting support, and I was wondering why being involved in so much music and in the arts that you know the 
queer lens was so silent and so diffused um, in all aspects of it. So when I started kind of uncovering artists and what they were doing out there, we went into COVID and suddenly so many plat platforms that artists had to be able to be seen and heard were kind of taken away, um, Pride being one of them. And I, as we kind of cruised through 2020, I was just like, what can be done? What can be done to help artists stay out there if they can't, you know, be out there live? So I created something called yeah. the My Music Story. And what it was is the stories of artists and how music has impacted them as queer individuals, both, you know, as they're kind of growing up, what music kind of meant to them, but also now as creators and what they're trying to kind of give nice. back and, and put out there. Nice. The first round in 2020, we had about 100 artists. And wow. Uh, it was it was really well received, and I sent the 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 stories. It was all over social media, and we sent the stories to you know different organizations, especially youth organizations. It's important for me to kind of make sure that the youth know that they can see themselves reflected in the art that's currently being created out there. So COVID kind of came and went, and it was still out there a bit. But then you get busy and stuff like that, and I was like, this needs to come back around again because now there's so many more artists out there that are are you know looking to be seen and heard. So I started it back up again and I put it out to just like the network to kind of start to kind of get some, you know, some traction going. And I have 30 now ready to launch and start putting out. Wow. So already in the last day and a half, two days, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to be busy. I sent so, one. I sent mine in the afternoon. <laughs> I know. And which is which is awesome because I think it really speaks to. You know, it's it's not just about whether you're a pop artist or, you know, or, or a jazz artist or whatever. It's about the intersectionality of artistry that's kind of out there okay. and really putting some emphasis on the fact that uh, to me, I think, and this is just me, that's fine. <laughs> I think that the queer music industry, the folks who are out there who are coming from different perspectives are making, I think, music that's even better than what's thank you i agree <laughs> i agree and my god i've i've seen this talent uh, last time thank you kenny last time we were on the show last episode i think i shared that we were doing a music festival in toronto the q musical and actually all the artists on uh, except for morgan because she's uh, uh you're uh, not he uh, they uh, they uh, are from middle middle canada and we got kenny from the east coast but uh the other artists from toronto uh, or surrounding area were all on the stage. So we had a wonderful day with 32 artists. And I agree with you. What I saw on that stage just reminded me that our talent pool is incredible in the community. Uh, we have, yeah, we have, we have beautiful voices, great work being done, great messages. And because of our diverse experiences and backgrounds, there's a very rich amount of stories mm -hmm. uh, that are like I, I can feel in the songs and experiences. So yeah. My name is Antoine El Hashim. I go also by El Hashim as an artist. I am the publisher of the Pink Pages directory. And with Kenny, we're going to be producing this show. Uh, I We founded this show, I uh, founded kind of this show about three, three, four years ago during COVID. Uh, again, we were bored and we wanted to talk community. So we put this show together and here we are. And uh, yeah, I uh, musically, I've released uh, in summer... The first single from my upcoming album called This Playlist Will Make You Feel Good. Uh, I released We Are Dancing Together, which uh, was received beautifully and warmly. Uh, and then I released a song called Never Giving Up, and that's circulating right now. And Calissa and I actually shot uh, the music video, and she was on it on the weekend so with some other really beautiful people. So that's coming up, too. All right. With that, I think we got you got to know us, all of us, so a little bit. And we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back to talk about the topic of today, Pride. How was uh, our Pride season, and how relevant is still Pride, and what do we feel about the whole topic? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
and we are back from our break. Welcome to the Queer Bunch. Look at the beautiful Queer Bunch that we have on the screen today. Uh, pride. I'm um, I'm just going to start with a statement for me, at least for me with, with Pride, because I've been involved in Pride movement for in different capacities. Um, the first thing that I always say is everything that I've done in the community for 35 years probably stemmed from my first experience in Pride. I was still with my parents. I haven't come out fully yet. I heard that their queer people have a little party downtown Toronto and they all come together and celebrate. <laughs> so I took the train down to the, to, to, to the city. I got out at the, at the queer village, at the gay village. And I see all those colorful, beautiful. It wasn't, it wasn't a big pride back then, but it was more intimate and community. And I, and, and people were hugging each other. Like people that I didn't know, like drag queens, like happy pride. And hug, hug. I was like, Oh my God, this is like, I want to be part of those people. I want to be part of this community. And, the next day I applied for a queer publication and that's how my career started is because I thought I kind of want to be part of this energy of this love of this beauty of people liking each other. Since then, I was the chair of marketing for World Pride for five years. I was recruited for that. I served as the vice president of Pride Durham, a Durham region here in Ontario for five years. Um, and I've got very close connections with Pride. I work with them on different things. So that's kind of my history with Pride. Um, so, I guess, what other what 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 is your experience with Pride? What what are your feelings? Let's start with that. Um, well, um, I, if you mind, I'll uh, I'll start. So, I think I was nineteen or or twenty when I went to my my uh, my first Pride festival in Toronto, and that was when I yeah you know, came out to to myself and and then and, and in some ways I'm I'm kind of a uh, a late a late bloomer so like in my in my 20s it was just like finding uh what 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 you love and um music as you all know is my my greatest uh, passion and, and what i enjoy so i think i think one day i i typed in on google just nonchalantly um gay men's chorus and in toronto and then uh forte was the one that, that popped up there was another one that that that, that uh popped up but with forte because it's all men, uh, I'm like, oh, that that'd be a, that'd be a, interesting. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I heard of gay, uh, gay men's choruses from in other parts of the world, and uh, actually, uh, the strange thing was that um, it was after it, it was right right around when Pulse happened. Okay. Um, and and we all know that it was a horrible day for for uh, um, our community. I mean, I, I remember just seeing it on the news, and I was devastated. I'm like. This, I'm like, this is my community. I'm like, you know, this is, you know, this is not fair. And just thinking that I wanted to make more of a difference and like, well, how? Uh, lo love music. So uh, in, uh, so in that way, um, with music and, and, and Forte, that's how I joined them. And I'm like, well, it's a nice combination of the arts and activism. And I think that uh, with Pride, um, yeah, yeah, it's a, a celebration of how far we've come but I think people for, uh, forget why it started. So it's and and it's why I, I keep saying know about know know your history and why it started because it happened when we lost Judy Garland and then and her funeral was the same day as Stonewall and then everything just snowballed from there. Like there's there's a, a whole a whole history about it. But I but people should remember that it that um, Pride's still a, a a protest. It's still political. Like the reason why it's observed is. Is because it's from our community saying, "Hey, you know, we want equality, not uh, uh, for 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 all, uh, uh, whatever your sexual orientation or ge uh, gender I identity uh, 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 is." And 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 it's 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 gotten better. I mean, I, th I think in Canada we're pretty lucky. There are, there are many countries in the world that that are that still for, forbid it, but um, I mean, we uh, uh, we are blessed here in Canada. The the, uh, that we have a, a, a quality. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Morgan, have you been involved in Pride? I have, mostly in supportive roles. Okay. Um, I remember, I think the first time I volunteered for Pride was probably my second or third actual Pride, and I was still an egg. I thought I was a girl, and I thought I was straight, and oh, how we, times have changed. <laughs> <That's> um, <laughs> <insane>. <laughs> 
But uh, I remember I was taking photographs of the parade. Um, Dan Shire, one of the organizers at the time, handed me a camera and went, take pictures. So I took pictures as the parade passed. And then I went, I can't take more pictures unless I race the parade and get to the front of it again. <laughs> so I was running in five inch heels. And then one of my heels broke. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm running barefoot on the streets of Regina, <laughs> chasing the parade so that I can get to the front. And I did this. I took pictures of the parade two and a half times, not <laughs> quite three. Um, and then I was like, I can't I can't even walk anymore. My feet hurt so bad. And it was the Trans Sask van that picked me up. Oh, well. And I look back at that moment and I'm like, wow, it would have been very different if I had known that I was trans at the time that the trans ask oh. band picked me up. But, you know, it was just kind of this, oh, this is like a part of the community that at that point you didn't really hear much about. It was very like, oh, yeah, gay people, not much. Oh, yeah, like queer and trans folks. So being like embraced so readily by the trans folks in the community was just beautiful to me and i look back at it i just and, felt a little warm in my heart yeah. <laughs> when you said that yeah um, exactly um but i mean as time has gone on i've i've supported pride in volunteer roles i've been a member of the local pride org okay. um i was on the board of a local pride org not one that plans the festival but a different one that does more activism and stuff i was chair of that for a while it was a lot um but I think the biggest thing is now I've started actually being a protester at <laughs> because I think that we have a lot of um, corporations that want to seem supportive but don't want to actually support as much as they want the credit for supporting. And I think that there's a lot of people that um, are involved in Pride that I just like personally think you shouldn't get to march in the parade unless you're actually doing things to make the lives of queer and trans people better. So uh, there was a big to-do about banning our SAS party MLAs and the premier from the pride in Saskatchewan here because they are passing transphobic laws, so they probably shouldn't get to march in pride. But then the there were, yeah, but then there were, you know, there were organizations that are contributing to genocide in the world that are in our pride parade and there are you know cops involved and there are army involved and all of this other stuff that i'm just like can can we have queer and trans people be front and center instead of corporations that's what i yeah. want to see fair, but, fair, fair enough i actually think that you know what we 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 have pride but also we need to speak up when we when we want change to happen so exactly i think, I think it's part of the movement is to point out things to pride um, Kenny, have you been involved in Pride at all? In a lot of different ways. Um, when I first, so I used to work on Young Street slinging beer um, back in my day when I lived in Toronto. Uh -huh. And so the Pride Parade would go past me. Um, and what's funny, <laughs> Morgan just said something because I threw, I threw a hissy fit because I was watching this parade and I was seeing all these floats and I was seeing, and I'll use Mac Cosmetics, nothing against Mac Cosmetics, but I'll just use this as a real great example, example okay. where I have no idea, but what it appeared to me was a whole lot of dancers and actors paid to pretend that they were queer or be flirty with one another on this giant float. And then there would be a Budweiser float right afterwards. And wedged in between them was, and it was the site that I saw, and it was a bunch of men who were, you know, walking with placards that they had made themselves. And it was gay, uh, queer men or d gay dads of Toronto. And yeah, I was like, I, know that I remember the group. <laughs> I was like, here's a little group that has no support, obviously wedged between Budweiser and Mac, who don't need any support and don't need any more marketing or whatnot, who are just out there trying to show that there was a party. And I was like, okay, this totally changes my thought. Cause I was at, I left George Brown college um, uh, after that and moved back East. And when I moved back East and I moved to, and I was in uh, Mount St. Vincent university, I was working with students. And then I started working in, in a pride capacity where we would go into prides, but I was working with students who wanted to be seen, wanted to be heard for who they were, and they didn't want compromise around who they were as people. And I was like, so I took that 
and kind of funneled it into what my work was at the university. Um, and it just really changed things because we started having different kinds of conversations. You know, there's corporations that are out there, but there's also a lot of what I was seeing at that time being, being involved that way was a lot of just real apathy towards, towards a lot of things. And I was just like, no, we, we've we've got to be stronger about this. And I don't mean be out there and, and chastising people. I just mean really talking about what is important and where and what pride means and educating people about it. So I went from initially being, you know, on, on the street slinging beer and, you know, going to a few events at night and being, you know, having a hissy fit <laughs> to I'm going to take that anger and take that I'm going to challenge it, challenge it into my work, what I'm doing and when I'm talking to people so that they, they don't forget. And they, they know that there can be something more for it. I love it. And now I just get angry because I don't see enough artists on stages. So <laughs> <laughs> different, ang different anger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're always an angry man. No. Okay. Um, um, actually that's an interesting uh, observation about the two floats and the small little group. And, um, I can't speak for Pride Toronto, but I have to say I have fantastic conversations with them. And we were addressing this actually a couple of days ago. Um, that actually it's it's being it's being seen. Uh, we are starting to pay attention to the fact that a corporation going down our parade with a big float and dancers that are paid for are nothing but show offing. Mm -hmm. It's it's it, you're you're doing it for your own glory but you're not making any impact to an actual queer person and changing their life with anything. So, so um, Pride Toronto more and more is actually starting to think about uh, how we're going to, to, to actually say to corporations, we're happy to share our, our celebration with you, but you have to actually, in your, applic uh, in your application to be a sponsor of Pride or to be, a, you have to show us how else for the rest of the year are you supporting the queer community. You can't only be in the parade. You have to show an ongoing allyship and support in order to be in our parade. I want to see how that that conversation continues go. All right, that's what I can say on that. Um, Kalissa. Yes. Hi. Your involvement <laughs> with Pride, what your memory of Pride? Um, well, I mean, I've lived in the community since I'm going to say 2001. Okay. So I, I've been in the community. Um, I used to go to Pride a lot when I was younger, but as I grew and stopped partying. Oh, um, we all slow down. Of, <laughs> I watch it from my balcony more. I find being having social anxiety and absorbing a lot of energy, it's just a lot of people for me. So as an artist, if I could have the opportunity to go on stage and perform, I would go and then kind of go home like I did with Q Music Health. <laughs> But, um, you know, it, I I love hearing the music from afar and I love hearing the festivities, but to be right in it, it's a lot for, yeah. it's a lot. But I I love, I love that people can come out and enjoy the festivities and just to celebrate, you know. Cool. Uh, okay, what's thoughts? Um, I love Pride. Well, I didn't like this year. I went this year. Um, and I hadn't gone in a while and I, cause I like a goal, like earlier, like, I think the first time I went was like early two thousands. Okay. Um, I loved it then. I loved the house parties. I loved like Peter Raha for parties, Chush, yeah. all those DJs. I, I live for those parties. Yes. I can't find that now. So, and I'm older, so I don't party the way I used to. Yeah. I'm very much, you know, focused on work, but I found it was very corporate. And I'm, I guess when I was going before, I wasn't used to that. You know, I would go to the different parties and you end up at the government and whatever, whatever. But now I'm just like, I was there. I, I stayed for like an hour and I left. Like, I just found it was different. Like you, Morgan, was saying about the people that are working the event. I, I really don't understand how there's people that are working the event that are homophobic. Like, why are you there? Why are you doing security? What yeah. are you doing at the event? Like, you actually, I don't experience, understand you actually it. experienced <laughs> that? You experienced yeah, that? Wow. Yeah. Okay. The Phoenix is bad for security. that. <laughs> yeah, the security, like they were, they oh, they had the place, but there was you, they were, there was people that were homophobic huh. that were doing security, That's you know, giving looks, commentary, whatever, whatever. But like I said, I wasn't used to that. I I went years ago and I loved Pride then. It was like a, and now I I guess I've kind of grown out of it, and I just don't get the same vibe. 
That's an interesting uh, uh, experience. I actually may want to speak to Pride about that. Uh, Danny, have you been involved in Pride movements at all? Uh, Pride movements, yeah. Like I remember coming to Toronto like underage and going to like Comfort Zone and, you know, having the party years as well <laughs> when I was younger. And then I slowly started meeting people and then started going to Pride. And um, I did the whole fun party thing. And then the older you get, the more you learn. It is, there's a lot of corporate power behind it mm -hmm. um and it does drive a lot of it but um being younger you don't really see that and then when you start getting older and you start looking yeah. on like more of a, an adult kind of way with because you have those marketing brains going on and you learn <laughs> more and um and then i stopped going for a few years i kind of like again i have the anxiety too so i don't like to be in big crowds and yeah. Same. um i self-medicate in those situations and i sometimes go too crazy yep. and then i regret <laughs> how i act in public because my anxiety yeah. uh, of being around a lot of people and a lot of strong personalities because we know the community has a lot of strong personalities um and kudos to them for being able to come out and own it and for me it's you know i i struggle with that so i try to stay away from going out a lot and going into those big situations unless i'm performing like i've performed at well pride hauled them in norfolk i don't know if you guys know where caledonia is and so i grew up in caledonia um yeah. i was bullied there a lot nice. and then i a few years ago had an opportunity to become the the chairman um okay. just because i was from there and they needed somebody to like really kind of take the reins on like a lot of the marketing and a lot of other things that a lot of the people that were on there were volunteers and they didn't really have a lot of expertise in. and luckily like in that time I had just went to school and I learned a bunch of stuff so and I had also performed a few years prior and that's where those protesters came in I don't know if you ever remember that year where the protesters were really bad <laughs> so I performed against them um and they thought I was going to cancel and not go on I was like screw this give me my red bull let's go and you know it just seeing everybody in the audience going from crying and upset to just getting their spirits lifted and performing and bringing everybody back up and saying, screw this. I even took one of the signs of their, their picket signs. And I was like this and one of the, you know, I had like, I had fun with it without offending anybody and just lifting the situation up. So mm -hmm. um, when they asked me to, to join, to be part of that, I, I jumped on that. And um, I went from that to, because of the workload, we kind of like um, transitioned someone else into it. Um, and then I went on to just doing their social media and working with uh, entertainment, um, which is great because I've, over the years, you get to give other people opportunities to get on stage and you're like, excellent. Like I can help these people now. And you have so many artists you think are so amazing and it's so hard to like, not see them be, you know, ex exposed or get the exposure, or have not exposed, but you know what I mean? Like have that exposure to be able to be seen <laughs> and, and show their art and light that stage up. And <laughs> I did enjoy that being able to like orchestrate that and bring those, those people together. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's pride for me. I don't really go much anymore. If I'm going to a pride, it's like Niagara or anywhere in Ontario where I'm, I'm going to do a show. I, I meet, I hang out with some kids and some people get some photos and then I'm out yeah, of there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I actually, I really like small, pro <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I do like small prides. I like small pride, uh, small town prides. I will say that that's what I kind of did this year. Where I spent most of my time going to smaller, smaller, yeah, and going yeah. to their fairs and going to like their. How, you actually get to talk to people. You actually actually enjoy yourself because you, you. Yeah, I appreciate. I don't. I didn't used to have anxiety, but I, I think it's just the crowds, the amount of crowds. Like when I was younger, when in, in my twenties, like to my friends, like yeah, too many people, yeah. Now it's like get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Really quickly. Yeah. It's, so I think I think it changes also with our energy is different, different as we as we as we grow. Uh Morgan. You, you like know, think oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh I you know, I would like to see honestly more pride organizations taking that kind of thing into account and other um limitations that people might have for various reasons. Um uh, like, you know, they don't have much for quiet events. Usually they don't have much for sober events. Usually they don't have noise. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, um, and it would be nice if people could participate in pride in a way that they're comfortable with, even if they're not into huge crowds and huge parties and lots of noise. Um, and like, it goes beyond that too. Our festival usually ends up on a grassy area and, um, this, there's been criticism every year for at least five years. I've been hearing this criticism and it hasn't been addressed that, they need to make it accessible to people who use who that. use yeah. physical accessibility aids. Yeah. Um, like, and there's ways of doing it. There's a beach nearby that you can get all the way to the water because they've got a rollout thing yeah. that you can get like a chair onto. And I'm like, why can't we have that on the grass? So that I really people can love get to the, the stage. I love yeah. the idea of uh, creating within Pride. Those who want the noise, but creating smaller. Yeah happening for people who just want to enjoy the, the feeling of being with the other people but without the noise and the crazy yeah because we need to build community with more than just the people who are comfortable like that. in that one situation yeah, i like that aaron yeah. you have something to add yeah uh so i think um with um with pride i mean i mean let's be honest for our community it's like christmas and halloween mixed together <laughs> um but uh but uh, what I've noticed, uh, not just in Pride, but in general, and I'm not sure if, if, if maybe uh, any of you have have felt this, but I find that in the LGBTQ uh, um, plus community, there's a lot of body shaming, where where okay. if you don't look a certain way, or yeah. uh, th then then it's like, oh well, you're not attractive, you're you're, you're not you're, you're not not going to pick up anybody with that. And I'm like, shut up. I'm like, yeah, so I'm like, so I'm body. like. Maybe not by your standards, but somebody else might 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 like a certain body type or 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 uh or this and that, and I and and with some people with, with pride when they go all out, it's like oh I have to like you know look uh, look all buff and hit the gym or 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 I have to like uh like um uh, um get my summer body or or pride figure ready. I'm like no you don't. I'm like just go and have a good time with your friends with, with people you love like. Who cares? Because I mean, pride's supposed to celebrate not not just your sexual orientation and your gender identity, but even you know uh, uh, all kinds of body images, where whether whether it's buff or more on the chunky side or or, or thinner, what 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 whatever it is. I mean, or or, or curvy, what what whatever. I mean, because yeah, and I and I find that with body shaming, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I would think you would know. Of all people would know what it's like to feel marginalized and judged and oppressed, and yet you're per, uh, per, perpetuating We're doing it to each other, basically. Yeah. Gilles, sorry, you were supposed to say something, or you wanted to say something, but we skipped. Oh, it was uh, piggybacking off of what you were saying, but I completely forgot. Sorry. Stop us. Okay. I, I think I think it was we were talking about like when we're younger, when we're older. I think we're just more aware of the energy around us. And enough. so I think, I think that's for me, I can only speak for myself. That's a huge part of it. And okay. to what, to what Morgan was saying, I think if they had smaller events, I would implement myself Enjoy more. Okay, and that's very I would because we it would have a social anxiety intimate. pride. <laughs> yeah. social anxiety. Oh my God. That. Yes. <laughs> I want yes, to be able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations and not have loud music and not have to feel like it's I have to walk up and down this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I don't want to walk people. up and down Very this. Very much so overstimulating. Where's my pride knitting circle? Like That's what I want to know. <laughs> it actually works. Uh, um, I mean, uh, like like personally, as somebody on the, on the spectrum of um, autism, because like um, it's sensory overload, so we might yeah. get overstimulated or may maybe... Maybe, uh, or or maybe so, uh, socially anxious. So if there if there was a group or or, or a circle for for that, then um, I mean it would just take a uh, inclusivity to a whole, a whole new level. Like like I like I I find because it can be very loud. I always take uh, your plugs with me just yeah, in but... case because when it when it uh, when, when it uh, gets loud because um, physiologically when, when you're when your hearing goes you can't get it back. So, you know, if you're, if you know, you're going to be in a, a loud environment, always have for protect. I know, you, know you protect your ears yeah, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, it's like Blanche and the Golden Girls. It might be a good thing to take some protection. I mean, the, the, the different, different story and, 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 uh, and a different subject, but nonetheless. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to ask what would make your pride better, but you're already all kind of discussing the, the, that. Um, there's this, there's something that happens, and I think it's it's part of the festival 
that becomes pride uh, where you have the primary organization organizing committee and and festival committee are trying to put something together but what doesn't happen and uh, you know what Morgan's talking about, which may sound funny, but it, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would love like, you know, a queer knitting circle of something that kind of happened, whatever it is. It's about integrating the community into the festival a little bit more so that it becomes less about one great big company organization planning something for everyone, but bringing people together, the folks who are out there who are doing really smart programming it's about supporting them and being making them part of the larger kind of piece i ran a few different um we called it move with pride um sessions last year uh and it was um a queer for for the lgbtq community by the lgbtq community and it was an hour of just fun exercise with dance and all the music that we played at it was from queer artists and it was closed it was for pride but it was like just more low-key there was stretching you could be any age you didn't have to be this you know stellar star that is ha likes to be at hot yoga whatever but i think what the community is doing i think there's really smart things they need to integrate it more i think yeah i would agree with yeah. that um would there um is pride relevant i mean uh, uh, in uh in is it still relevant because we've heard coming out stories we got we heard we heard uh experiences and all that as a movement is it still relevant uh aaron you have something absolutely uh yeah. i i mean uh i mean it it started out as a, a, a protest and and a, a stand for more for, for for equality i mean the tone of it i i think has has changed because we because like it, it's got it's gotten very, uh, uh, very uh very corporate, but it uh it is still very uh cel celebratory, and and I think why it's still relevant is because for too long um mi mi minorities I I I I hate that word um for so long have been judged and have been made made to feel less than, but this is our way of saying this is who we are, we want to celebrate our individuality, you know, and and. And, you know, you have no right to take that away from us. Even if you don't agree with it, that's one thing. But it's, but that's not your decision to make to, to, to tell us that, that, that we can't celebrate who we are. Because there are people in the world um, that are, uh, the, uh, that, that need um, um, uh, people in the, in, in the, in the community to be those voices and say, this is okay. It's, a, it's, a it's okay to be gay, lesbian, transgender, uh, 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 not non-binary, who, whoever, and, and yeah, and and that will encourage other people to to be who who they are. Because when you're told to be ashamed of who you are, then you know that that can manifest itself in in uh, in unhealthy ways. So right. in in those ways, pride it it, it, it is still re uh, re um, relevant, not uh, not just uh, of how it started. But but uh, but as a reminder to embrace and celebrate our individuality, it. our idiosyncrasies, our quirks, our figures, our cultures, our uh, everything about us. Thank you. And Morgan, pick it up. I am going <laughs> to piggyback off of that because I think that um, like pride is pride is super relevant, not necessarily the um, you know corporate partying like that's important the celebration is important but the corporate partying I, i'm like well that's not really necessarily always relevant to the cause of pride yeah. anymore um but like as long as people are looking at a uh, like same gendered couple and going i don't want to see that they should keep it in private when they're just holding hands as long as that's going on we need pride as long as me walking down the street with a beard on my face and a curvy figure gets people turning and going we still need pride. like as I still need pride. There are people yeah. in my town. One guy stopped me on the sidewalk, blocked my way and said, are you one of those transgenders? And oh I was God. like, ouch, what are you even doing? Like this is harassment. And as long as that's going on, we still need pride because people need to understand that people who are loving each other in consensual adult relationships, it shouldn't matter what gender they are. 
I don't know why your statement is about to make me cry. Uh, <laughs> because of repeating that, I think as long as any of these things are happening, we do need yeah. pride. Because yeah. we need a louder voice to speak to the fact that you can't you can't shut us up. Yes, that you can't stop us from yes. loving people, that you can't stop us from loving ourselves. Well, I mean, you. you can, but you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, yeah, yeah, you said yeah, something. It, yeah, and uh, if, I, uh, if I may uh, uh, also add to uh, Morgan, what, what you were saying, that why would anybody want to stomp out love when we need more of that in the world? Because, the, because, because there's so much heaviness and um, and I think that, we focus to uh or or put more emphasis on what's dark and what's mean and what's wrong and love. what's negative that you know there there is still love and goodness and kindness in the world and for anybody to to try and take that away it's like what's your problem thank you danny can i chime in uh, oh, um sorry. danny wanted sorry. to say something and then we'll get to kelissa we'll get to you oh i mean all i have to add is just like all the progress that we've had all of these years, um, we still have more progress to go. And I feel like if there isn't a pride, we're going to lose a lot of that um, in every facet of pride. Um, I remember like performing at Pride Hall of Norfolk this last year, and it was across the, like, the street from the high school that I was bullied at for years. Um, and now just seeing all these years later, like I think I graduated in like, 2000 and, like, oh, like 2008 or something. And now there's pride flags in the windows. Um, a lot of people feeling a lot more comfortable at school. It's more accepting. They have more education programs. Um, and they let us hang our posters in the in the hallways there. Like when I was a kid, that was not allowed. That wouldn't even be talked about. I was like the black sheep. I hung up with all the girls. And then being able to like get on stage and do that full circle moment of like performing, like Feel Like Me, for instance, the coming out song that I have where it's kind of like the end of the show thing where all the kids go on stage and it's it's about breaking out of that cage, out of that, you know, that lack of freedom that you have. And um, yeah, it was just really, really great to be able to do that and just kind of be like, you know what I mean? Like, screw you bullies that did all that to me. And <laughs> be able to full circle that. It was a really nice, like, a moment that I always remember. And that is progress. Thanks, Danny. 10 years, but that's progress. Kelissa, my queen. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, like, I think in, in to what Aaron was saying, I think a lot of the holdback has to do with the patriarchal thinking and the older generation as well. And, you know, back when my daughter was, you know, in her early days, I had an issue with certain things being taught, right, at some point. But then I had to really pull myself back and be like, but if my child's not taught these things, then how can they make change in the world? And I see the progression in how my child was brought up to where how I was brought up in our generation. And then, you know, I think a lot of the problem is that still that patriarchal thinking. If you go on, you know, things like platforms like Six Buzz on Instagram and you see a lot of hateful comments against like when they post about pride, right? Again, a lot of that has to do with our home environments what's in media as well and the patriarchal thinking and that's all combined right and i think there's still a lot more work to do in in how we teach our children and Thank i you. think i think it needs to be taught in, in the education system in a way like again if we look at culturally we have a lot of our our, our country is very diverse right but you, you know i think everyone should be taught to a certain extent whether like it should be mandatory because how can you teach a child when they're learning something at home how do you change their mindset not that you're trying to change you them but you're trying to make them understand it from a different perspective thank you yeah. right yeah and, yeah and and plus like to, to add um um Calissa, with that in schools yeah 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 you're taught math science history all these things what about classes in compassion love. Yeah. kindness Passion. <laughs> re respect love huma humanity well, um, you just said the words right you so, just said the word history we are yeah. taught a certain kind of history but we are not taught queer history we're right. not taught black Absolutely. history we're not taught an indigenous history right. we're taught a very colonialized and <laughs> not to get down that path too much but we are taught a very specific type of history right. but we've not taught about our own people no, and I, I think I think it's time. Uh, I think that um, schools should have a 
a, a, a course on 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 queer, on queer history, uh, LGBTQ plus. And uh, from what I know, I think I think in in the public school system, as far as the sex ed curriculum, from what I know, I think grade one is when you learn the 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 names of the the anatomy, the body parts. I'm like, okay. And then I think third grade is when they learn about sexual orientation, gay, straight, lesbian, transgender, what ha what have you. So it's like young age, they're taught, oh, don't judge anybody based on who they love. And then I think it's grade, it was grade seven and eight, they're taught about um STDs and and consent because I think at that age, that's when your sexual curiosity um begins but even in some in some parts of the world even just saying the word sex gets people all turned on like uh, so uh, so so i'm like well you know what the, th the thing is the more you forbid something the more enticing it is so you know the more the more you say for example you know you don't talk about sex then people want to learn more about it so you know like i and 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 i think we we, we need those frank uh um conversations because uh, about it because like what if, what if for example you have a a 16 year old girl who's pregnant because you didn't have that conversation with her about consent being smart making the right choices so you know these parents need to get over their prejudices and just uh, and and not be afraid to to have those those um conversations, conversations. and you, right <clears throat> and, and it, so and even with 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 just the hypocrisy that that uh that that um that happens where like, like like in media it's like why is it okay for uh for for a 10 year old to to see like a video game or a show about someone's body being blown to bits but it's not okay for uh for a 10 year old to 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 see two consenting adults just cuddling or showing how much they 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 love each other like back then networks wouldn't even air ads about about birth control or pr protection so thank you so aaron we get up we have to we have, we're watching the time oh. everyone okay so uh okay. thanks aaron uh and uh kenny uh last on the topic of is pride relevant i i think it's been it's been said that you know so long as there is still marginalization happening and there are things that are happening you you still need it not only from a celebration standpoint for, for people to feel proud about themselves, but also from an educational standpoint and from a community standpoint. I think there's, I love it. You know, there's a lot, still a lot of work to be done. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, uh, before we take a break and come back for uh, for goodbyes, I was gonna say this because as I said, I've been heavily involved with the different Pride organizations. I know that the people behind the scene, uh, it's not-for-profit organizations that are volunteers. They don't always do the right thing. But as long as we continue being involved as a community, as people, and speaking up and giving them feedback and letting them know what we want to see, I think progress will always, you know, will always progress in the, the conversation. And with that, let's take a little break eh? and come back to say goodbye. And the queer bunch is back. Uh, I think you noticed, uh, viewers, that we, <clears throat> our host, uh, one of our hosts, Kay Woods, had to get going. She, uh, she had an emergency to tend to. So, uh, with that, uh, this was a great conversation on Pride. What did we think? We enjoyed that. Per se, yeah. yeah, very much. Yeah, and, I know, yeah. Uh, I, I know I can go on, a, on attention times, but yeah, that that's just me. Who was right that? We love talking. Um, Can't wait to talk, right? I um uh, I think I'm gonna uh, just check with us if um a memory of Pride that sticks in your mind some something personal that you remember from a specific Pride do we have any of that? Like for me, I know that when I was at World Pride and I was behind the stage and we had the whole world in Toronto and I looked outside from behind the curtain and I saw the amount of people at Dundas Square and. I knew that we've done a lot of great work over the last number of decades to be able to host such a party. And that was a special moment for me. I agree on that too, because I performing at Toronto Pride for the opportunity that you gave me. It was my first time ever performing in Toronto Pride and it was on my bucket list for years. And I never got the opportunity from the 
the main sector of them after applying uh-huh. for years. And so I really appreciate that. It was, that was a, besides performing against the protesters years ago when I was like in like 2017, that was definitely a very memorable like nice moment. So yeah. yeah. Aaron, I, uh, yeah I, I would say it's a, a toss up between world pride when Toronto hosted it. And when I went in 2016, cause that was the last time that I went to zippers before it closed. I missed that place so much. That's um, the club in Toronto, everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, but, uh, but, but, yeah. I mean, uh, it, that was fun. I, I've always loved going there to see to see the the drag shows. Yeah, like, like to stuff. like, like to yeah. me, like drag. It's like being like a little kid playing dress up, and it's a, it's always fun. I, I enjoy drag shows when, when, when I leave them, I feel like always lighthearted and joyful. It's it's always a a, a a a gay old time, no pun intended. And so you know, more more power to our 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 dra- drag our, um, <laughs> our drag queens and and drag kings. Yes, Morgan, any special little memory? You know, um, in 2020, when COVID hit, our pride here didn't happen because okay. COVID had hit and we were in lockdown. Um, and so we did a bunch of pride stuff in the. September once things started opening up again, but okay. people were still really cautious. So everything was still really like, you know, social distancing and masked and all of this stuff. Um, they, you are pride, which is an organization in Regina did a performance opportunity thing that they put together a show in the parking lot of one of our performing arts centers mm-hmm. where they had us perform on stage and I was, I think the first one up. So I went up and I was playing. And when I finished the first song, um, it well, people couldn't clap because they were all in their cars because that was <laughs> how they did the social distancing. So all of a sudden, all these vehicles were just honking at me. Oh. I was like, I, I my mother st- tells me that I jumped, like I actually physically like <laughs> flinched enough that she could see it from her car. Um, and it was just such an interesting thing. And I remember saying into the microphone, like, oh, that's so interesting. I uh I've never been honked at in such a positive way before. <laughs> Um, That's very, very sweet. Nice, Um, I'm going to say, you know, again, like Danny, I've always wanted to get a land a spot on a pride stage for many, many years. So the opportunity of being on the Q Music Hall was, you know, was very welcome. You know, it was you all were beautiful. something that I wanted to fulfill for a very long time. I hope next year I can make it on an actual, like, in the events and whatnot. But, uh, that was the startup for me. Beautiful. Very fun. Annie, my co-producer. Uh, for me, uh, it comes in the form of my first Pride in Toronto, which was really my first Pride ever, being a, a New Brunswick East Coast boy. Um, it was kind of going to my first one with some friends and had never experienced it before and and seeing and just kind of being, it was almost kind of, I was wary a bit of, of it all. Mm-hmm. And my friend, he, he straight was, he just, I think he kind of sensed that I didn't, I maybe was a fish out of water and I didn't know how to kind of experience. He just grabbed hold, he held my hand, he grabbed my hand. He's like, let's go. And he just oh. walked in with me holding my hand. And I had never kind of experienced that before. And it was just really, That's really beautiful easy. support. I love it. Yeah, completely. And so from there on, it was kind of like, it always kind of impacted me thinking about when I'm at festivals, looking around to see who feels that they don't know how to enjoy it or how to kind of find themselves in it is to watch for people like that. Because you just assume that because it's pride, everybody goes into it and kind of goes, ah, finally, here I am. Kick up my heels. Um, (laughs) Not That's a very sweet can... observation. Not everybody is as comfortable, and we need yeah. to be aware of that. Not just to, into, yeah. I, wow, we really have some very sensitive people on this show who are very kind <laughs> yeah. and very sweet. I love it. No, I love it. Uh, well, I guess that's it. Was it a therapy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you all are beautiful. Thank you. I. Uh, well, this was a good conversation. I lo- I love chatting with community, and. Um, Join us again next month on another topic. You don't know who you're going to meet on this show. You may see some artists that you already met on our show, and you might be some new ones. So don't miss the next episode. Thank you for being here. 
All right, my queer bunch, thank you for being here. I love you. Take care. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.